Welcome to the Colony Treasure Network. I'm Stephen Chalmers, your host. Today finds us on the Maine coast. I have wanted to come to Maine since I was in high school. We finally made it out here. I am just thrilled to be out here in Maine. If you want to check out all of our Maine-centric content, uh, all of the Culinary Treasure Network uh, content related to Maine, go to adventuresonthemaincoast.com. But my special guest today is Diana. You are the Maine Lobster Lady. How amazing is that? Yes, the one and only. <laughs> I'm so delighted that you're here. Now, you are a true Mainer. You live on Isle of Ho, which is we'll talk about, which is absolutely incredible. But um, where did your, uh, tell me about here, your the Maine Lobster Lady journey first started. Where were you at in 2009? What were you doing that kind of, that led to where we're at today? Well, I was running an inn on Isla Ho, and um, I just decided I'd like to add on to my business a little bit. And we had a little Ford Econoline line van that we dubbed the White Buffalo, and we'd load her up with uh, lobster meat and rolls, among other things. And I'd send my daughter down on the dock, and she'd pedal lobster rolls and whatnot to any island visitors that came off the mailboat. So Isla Ho, if I understand, I was downtown Stonington last night and mm-hmm. the ferry comes in there. Mm-hmm. And how long a ferry ride is it from Stonington to Isla Ho? About 40 minutes. 40 minutes. And there's about 85 people live year round on Isla Ho. Is that right? No, that's a, that, that would be a lot. Um, there's, <laughs> <laughs> there's roughly 50 people who live out on Isla Ho year round. Wow. And um, see, as I understand correctly, you get uh, about five feet of snow out this way, at least in Stonington. How much snow do you get a year in uh, in Isla Ho? A lot? A little? Um, It just depends on the year. Um, Last year, we got a good amount. The year before, you know, not so much. I know that's not giving you measurements, but that's my, you know, just right or not enough or whatever. But... um, just depends on the year. Fair enough. Now, I've been to, I don't know, you probably have never heard of this place. It's called Stahican, uh, Washington. It's in central Washington. You have to take a ferry to get there. Uh, there's about 80 year-round residents. Snows like crazy. And when I heard of Isla Ho, I immediately thought of Stahican, two amazing places. And a good percentage of um, Isla Ho is part of, um, how do you say that cool national park down the road from here? Acadia National Park. Okay, I had it right. Okay, Acadia National Park. And yes. Isla Ho is actually part of Acadia National Park, part of it. Yes. Uh, actually, Acadia National Park makes up about 60% of the island. Yeah, we're hoping to um, uh, hop uh, su- Sunday morning, get some bikes, get there at 9 a.m. I've talked to them. They're going to put some bikes aside for us. We're mm-hmm. going to ride out, ride around on there and check it out. Mm-hmm. But what's it like to live on an island like that year round? Well, it can be, you know, it's great in the summertime because the island population swells to around 300 or so people. Oh, huge. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, compared to 50, that's huge. Um, in the in the wintertime, you know, it's like, ooh, look, somebody just drove by. And we all know who it was because, you know, we know all the vehicles by sound. You don't even have to look out the window. And um, where do you get groceries? Do you On Isla Ho or do you have to take the ferry in? Well, it, it's a combination. There's an island store there that has staples. and um, But if you want to do a big shop and, you know, supply yourself up for a couple of weeks, you take the mailboat, go to the drive to um, usually Ellsworth, which is about a 40-minute drive from Stonington. So it's a... It's a uh, pilgrimage to get groceries. And in the winter, how often does the um, does the mailboat run? The mailboat runs twice a day. Even in the winter? Even in the winter. Wow. Okay. Because like in Stahican, in the winter, it's three times a week. Yeah. It We're, drops way down. We are so lucky to have the Ilaho boat services. Um, we would not be, you know, a sustainable island community without them. Yeah, I, I know that that's got nothing to do with uh, Maine Lobster Lady stuff and all your incredible off-the-chart lobster rolls, but I'm just so fascinated um, by you know, I just think it, 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 and I can't wait to see it, but the photo scene, it is absolutely beautiful out there, right? It's gorgeous, yes. Like we said, you know, Acadia National Park, 18 miles of hiking trails, rock, you know, rocky coastline, it's just gorgeous. Oh, that is phenomenal. Yeah, we're staying at Aragosa, and um, mm. I took a picture this morning of the coastline, and it's, it's kind of like the Oregon coast, but more rocky, the trees mm-hmm. a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've always said that the Oregon coast is the most beautiful place in the United States, and I'm thinking the Maine coast gives it a run for its money. I'm sure that it does. <laughs> I've never been to the Oregon coast, but, uh, you know, I'm partial. Oh, we'll have to get you out that way. You know, we don't have lobster out there, but once in a while, there's a good Dungeness crab roll. They're sure. not as a big a deal as they are around here. Here, lobster rolls 
festivals are part of the culture. Yes, absolutely. I mean, people there, there's trucks everywhere or restaurants. People sit outside in the summer at picnic tables. Mm-hmm. They have their lobster rolls. Okay, back to your story. So 2009, you have an inn, yes. place for people to stay, yes. fine dining. You put yes. in a, a truck and you start selling lobster rolls out of the truck. Yes. Fast forward, shorthand the story. Uh, the re- Great Recession hits. Mm-hmm. We lived through a Great Recession. Can you imagine? Mm-hmm. Uh, wiped me out, caused you guys a lot of challenges. Yes. And But the result for that is along the way, you bought MainLobsterLady.com, which is marketing brilliance. My hat's off to you. Thank you. You put up a website. You got a full-blown big food truck. Yes. And you started selling lobster rolls out of the food truck. And you end up having adventures all over the country. Correct. You won big awards in New York. You took the food truck to other parts of the United States. Yes. But the food truck, now and then, every summer, it's on Isla Ho. Correct. Now, how do you get the truck out there? Well, it came out on a barge, so it's never leaving. It's it's staying put. It's a more like a. It looks more like a quintessential main shack. You know, if you can picture a wooden sides with a tin roof, kind of very um, picturesque and fitting for an island. Okay, so I so that contraption that's out there, and I say contraptions, mm-hmm. you know, in Portland we have some food, we have, all have food carts. Mm-hmm. And some food carts have an engine and steering wheel, and mm-hmm. some of them are just buildings on wheels that don't go anywhere. And God help you, if you take them down the freeway, they'll fall apart. So your contraption, it just lives there year round, but it's open in the summer. It's open in the summer. It is a trailer, and it can be moved if, if need be, but it's parked at the island store, and that's where it's worked out best for us. That's his home. And so uh, in June is when it opens. Yes. Closes roughly mid-September. Mm-hmm. And there's picnic tables out there? There sure is. <laughs> okay. So we're going to talk about the end of this podcast, these incredible, insane lobster rolls. I'm going to eat one. We're going to talk about it. But what do we drink with our lobster rolls? Oh, we drink blueberry lemonade, of course. <laughs> And blueberries are big here. Um, I had a lot of fun. We were coming here. We kind of, we didn't quite go far enough. Um, you know, our GPS <laughs> led us astray. So we called you and, and, and uh, my incredible friend Kevin is driving and he's a really good navigator. And you said one of the most magical things I'd ever heard. You said, you'll see a blueberry field on your left. <laughs> and I'm like, I've never seen a blueberry field. <laughs> yes. Blueberries are a big deal around here. They sure are. It's <laughs> it, like... Second in line next to lobster, in my opinion. Okay, now, now, blue, now I like to add things to things. Mm-hmm. Now, do, blueberry lemonade, is it good with a little bit of vodka added? Uh, are you kidding me? Killer. <laughs> and I don't know about this one, but how about gin? Is gin good in there? Oh, absolutely. Oh. There's, there's not a lot that, you know, that would, hurt, that would hurt it. Okay, so let me see if I understand this correctly. You make real lobster rolls. Mm-hmm. You like blueberry lemonade with vodka or gin. <laughs> It's a good thing we both have significant others because I would run away with you in a heartbeat. Oh, my gosh. You are phenomenal. Okay. So recession hits. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you launch this food truck. Mm-hmm. Um, everything's rolling along. Everything's going great. Traveling around the country. Your fans, you know, know some of that part of your journey. But you know, that some of that stuff doesn't apply now, so it's not going to cover it here. It's no longer part of the story. Okay. But for longtime fans that are hearing it, we, we know that you know, and mm-hmm. that's great. But then, first we live through recession. Mm-hmm. I studied pandemics in high school, just as a weird off chance, particularly the Spanish flu. I don't know why I had to do it, but I did. And it was in my part of one of our social studies units. And then we lived through a global pandemic. Can you imagine? I know. It's crazy. <laughs> and and like, like me, it caused you to kind of pivot and shift. Sure did. And that's where we're sitting right now in the main Lobster Lady production facility here in Sedgwick. Mm-hmm. And what is the magic that you do out of this place? Well, we ship lobster rolls in the form of kits, what we like to refer to as uh, lobster love in the form of kits, and we ship them from our door to yours, everything you need to make a main lobster roll right at home. Okay, so so they're they're the different size kits. There's four mm-hmm. lobster rolls, eight lobster rolls, twelve lobster mm-hmm. rolls, and we'll talk about the other cool stuff you ship in a second. Mm-hmm. But when I get a four pack of lobster rolls, which I'm going to order at Christmas time, I know it's going to be my Christmas gift to me. I'm going to have this box, this magical box arrive. What will I find in that box? You will find a pound of lobster meat, four uh, top split New England style rolls, a couple sticks of butter. A pouch of our lemon mayo and a lemon and directions on how to prepare the best lobster roll you'll ever eat. Yeah, I'm seeing this right now. How to prepare the perfect lobster roll. And you give people two options. I do. Um, A hot buttered lobster roll 
and a traditional Maine lobster roll. We'll talk about that in a bit. But people go to your website, mainelobsterlady.com, and they can have the lobster love, as you said, shipped right to their door. Mm-hmm. Well, I would buy that to Maine. Lobster love shipped right. It's probably too long, but that's a great catchphrase. <laughs> lobster love shipped right to your door. I absolutely love that. So they can have it shipped to their door, mm-hmm. um, which is phenomenal, phenomenal. And how hard was it to transition into that? Um, it took about a year of um in the making of figuring out all the licensing and HACCP plans and, you know, all the, you know, how much ice do I need to get it from here to there with a, a bulk of our um, shipments are headed out to the southwest. So we needed to make sure that everything was going to arrive fresh and wonderful. And so it took a while. People are crazy about um, the Maine lobster lane in Arizona, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we we got to get some, uh, you know, I've got listeners all over the world. Mm-hmm. And uh, no, I just want to apologize in advance to our international listeners. We do not ship uh, lobster love to your door if you live outside the United States. No Canada, no New Zealand, no China, no France, no Indonesia. It does not leave the borders of the United States, right? Correct. Just like my dear friend Jennifer owns Oregon Coast Wasabi and will ship real wasabi. She goes real wasabi on the Oregon Coast, hence the name Oregon Coast Wasabi. She only ships to the United States. Hers is agriculture. They won't let her. Mm -hmm. Uh, And shipping international is tough. So just just the United States if you want to get it. So even though I have listeners all over, I have a lot of listeners like in the Portland area. We got to get lobster rolls going to the northwest. Absolutely. Oh, oh, that absolutely. is absolutely phenomenal. And then you ended up with this beautiful space. The universe, the way I like to see the world, the universe responds to what we do. You're like, I got to pivot. My cart shut down. I need income. I need to sell lobster rolls. My fans are screaming for lobster rolls. So you begin this journey of kind of putting together the business, and then the universe sends you this cool building. Yes. It, it, it was just, I've, I've drove by it a million times, and I just thought one day I pulled in, and I window peeped, and I was like in love, and I happened to know the person who owned it, and he made me a deal that, or an offer, I guess, I couldn't refuse, so here we are. Yeah, and it's got a cool kind of, as I'm looking around, nautical theme, um, but this is a production facility. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's boxes, stacked different size boxes, and uh, a couple times a week, you come in, load up boxes, Ship them off, and mm-hmm. away, the, away the lobster love goes. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, um, so people can come and have lobsters on Idaho in the summer, or they can have them shipped to their door. Yes, lobster rolls only, not live lobsters. Not just... lo- lobsters only. Okay. Yeah. And then you ship some other amazing things, not just lobster rolls. Yeah, we ship um, lobster. What we, we refer to as lobster meal kits, like lobster scampi kit, lobster alfredo kit, lobster stew kit. A lobster stew kit? Yes. What is in a lobster stew? You got my attention. That sounds like a perfect warm summer, I mean, cold summer, eve, cold winter evening meal. It is the simplest thing ever. It's lobster meat, butter, salt, pepper, and believe it or not, canned milk. That's it. It's delicious. Uh, it's, I, a, it's a quintessential old timey Maine supper. Okay, so like I thought I was falling in love with you, but now I think I despise you because you were doing serious damage to my wallet because now I'm going to have to order lobster stew and lobster rolls. That's right. Lobster stew. I am just captivated. That sounds absolutely fantastic. Okay, and then just because it's absolutely insane, you you can do a four-pack, an eight-pack, a 12-pack, but Mm -hmm. you do something you call oversized lobster rolls. What the heck are those? That's double the meat. Same roll, double the meat. So the the roll's buried in there, but, you know. As I've said before, it's just a vehicle to get the lobster meat to your mouth. And I've got two lobster rolls sitting here in front of me. You've got two kinds that mm-hmm. I'm about to devour, mm-hmm. and they're they're chocked full of meat. Now, mm-hmm. did, was that a double or a single? No, that was a single. There, there is no way. You, what the double is insane. It, it it it's something you probably would have to eat, at least in part with a fork, because it just falls out of the roll. All right, and another fun thing that's coming about, you have added a food truck, uh, a second truck, basically, mm-hmm. to your Sedgwick here, the Sedgwick location. Mm-hmm. There's picnic tables and a pine area, and so starting summer of 2022, if you can believe it, Correct. summer of 2022, people are going to be able to come in the summer, sit here at picnic tables. They're going to have um, the main lobster rolls. Now, at Isla Ho, you only do the mayo. We only do the traditional style out out there, we're not equipped to do the the hot buttered one out there, but I'll have both styles available here. Yeah, so hot buttered lobster rolls or the mayo ones, and will there be blueberry lemonade? <laughs> 
without a doubt. So that I would encourage people to um, to bring a flask on their plane if they're traveling <laughs> out here, and, and don't tell anybody. This is not not nope. for you. You can't tell anybody doing this. And then they're um, like, if they fly into Portland, I flew into Portland, Maine. I went to Bow Street Beverage. This incredible. One of the most beautiful liquor stores I've ever been to. Everything local, Maine, Maine gin, uh, lots of cool maple bourbons, maple rums, maple, all kinds of things. Um, incredible um, aguave spirits. I got some local gin. They can get some local gin or vodka, take it to their room, and they can pour it into their flask. And then very discreetly, with no one knowing, <laughs> add it to their blueberry lemonade. Now, they cannot tell anybody. Don't post it on social media. Of course, I never said this. No. Nope. But how amazing to sit among the pine trees here at this beautiful piece of property at a picnic table, some blueberry lemonade, a Maine lobster roll. Oh, I am so excited. I got to come back and check that out. I hope you will. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the two different types of lobster rolls. Now, the, tell, me what, tell me about making a hot buttered one. Well, a hot buttered one is you, you, you do the, it's the same steps basically, um, except the lobster meat is warm. You just warm the lobster meat in a little bit of melted butter. You don't cook it, you just warm it, and then you p spoon it into the hot butter, you know, the hot grilled roll and drizzle it with the remaining pan butter, and boom you got a hot buttered lobster roll. Now, now, we shot some video with you, and I watched you doing that. So you you kind of, you got the butter melted. Mm -hmm. And in the in the kits people get, they get two sticks of salted butter. They do. Uh, I own happy, says meltabutter.com. Mm -hmm. And you melted the butter. Mm -hmm. You put the lobster roll on one side down uh, and both sides down in the, in the butter. Then you put it in another pan and started to brown it. Yes. It's just an easier way than taking and brushing the butter on the sides of the roll. Just dip it in the butter and put it in another pan, toast the rolls, and then you've got your melted butter all ready to accept the lobster. Now, do we do this toasted roll technique, whether we're having the cold mayo version and the hot buttered version? That's correct. Okay. So a toasted buttered roll either way. Yes. Oh. I love that. Yes. Okay, but we're now we're on the hot buttered. I want to say hot buttered rum because I'm so conditioned for that. But a hot <laughs> buttered lobster roll. Mm -hmm. Then you put the lobster meat in the rest of the melted butter, and mm -hmm. you then um, warm it. You're not cooking. Lobster's cooked. You're not cooking it. You're right. warming it. You're warming and it. And then you lovingly scoop it into the lobster roll. Correct. And then I watched you. It was incredible. Then you took the pan and you drizzled some more of that lo lo roasted butter, or melted butter right over the top of the lobster roll. Yes. I thought we were going to need to call the paramedics because <laughs> I was so excited. I about jumped out of my skin. And when you do that, the paramedics need to come and stuff you back in your skin. That's exactly. Oh, my goodness. What a phenomenal thing to see that melted butter go on these lobster rolls. Okay. So for my taste... Um, I enjoyed one of your lobster rolls. They're absolutely phenomenal. I enjoyed two of your lobster rolls, you mm -hmm. know, each kind. The hot buttered lobster roll, to me, I want it like on a cold winter night or a cool fall evening with a nice glass of red wine. Um, it's like a whole different, it's not like there's warm and cool. It's not like there's butter. It's like two different dishes in my head. Yes. Two very, very different dishes. Yes. And it's hard to explain if you haven't had one because a lot of people have never been to Maine and never had a lobster roll. By the way, I have to tell you what an incredible thing. The first Maine lobster roll I've ever had in my life was made for me by hand with love by the Maine lobster lady. That's a story I'm going to revel in the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> but the mayo, the cool one, that's mm -hmm. the traditional one. That's what Mainers have. Yes, yes. That's tip that's typically what you're going to find at most Rosie Shocks is the... Um, the traditional style. And I, I, I'd like to like interject here that I like to use only uh, the claw knuckle meat of the lobster, no tail meat. I feel like that's chewy and it's, it's great if you're going to have a whole lobster, you know, nice and hot right out of the steam bath. But for lobster rolls, you want to stick with the claws and knuckle, the sweetest, most tender part of the lobster. So you're really picky about how you do the main lobster lady lobster. Absolutely. <laughs> I wouldn't have it any other way. Okay, so how do we, how do, when I come, what am I getting when I have a, 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 a the mayo, the cool lobster roll? You mean if in the box or just in when general? I, when I'm about to eat one, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be the uh, top split New England style roll, butter grilled, and then we're going to mix chilled um, main claw knuckle lobster meat together with some lemon mayo that we put together, and we're going to scoop it onto the roll, and you're going to squeeze a little bit of lemon on it, and you're going to... 
going to eat it. No, <laughs> uh, the one I ate back there when you were cooking, I mm -hmm. ate both of them. I had butter mm -hmm. and then the mayo one, and I squeezed mm -hmm. lemon on both. Mm -hmm. And that lemon just added a little depth of richness. It cut through the cut through the lobster perfectly. That little hint of citrus. Mm -hmm. um, it was absolutely phenomenal. I want to make it clear whether you are here uh, on the main coast having Maine lobster, lady lobster rolls, or they're shipped right to your door. The kit they get, they can do hot buttered. Or mayo, you, you give the ingredients for either way, or both. I give the ingredients for the, like say they get a four roll kit, you get enough ingredients to prepare them all one way or all the other way, or you can choose to do two of each. Two of each, yeah. I think when I get my kit at Christmas time, I think I'm going to do two buttered ones and two mayo ones just for the fun of the thing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I, I think that's the way to go. But boy, there... I, I, I don't know. I, I have great appreciation for the fact that, you know, true Mainers, they love the mayo version. Mm -hmm. I think I love them equally. I mean, I do love me some mayonnaise. I really, really, truly do. Um, I won't name brands, but I'm picky about my brands of mayonnaise. Uh, by the way, your your mayo is absolutely phenomenal. But I love the bot buttered and I love the mayo. Yeah. I mean, you can't go wrong either way. It's lobster, and it's Maine. Okay, so what's your? I think I know the answer to this awful question I'm about to ask you. So, so brace yourself. But um, lobster rolls and celery. Oh, no, no, no! It, it, in my mind, nothing. No greenery. No, <laughs> no, no greenery allowed. If I want greens, I'll have a salad. We're not going to sully the lobster roll no. with greenery. <laughs> it, at least for me. That's my opinion. <laughs> what, what do you mean? That you are the main lobster lady, so your opinion should carry a tremendous amount of weight. I would hope so. Uh, I don't <laughs> know if, you know, um, uh, you know, in the good book, it says a prophet is not honored in their own country. I don't know if you heard that quote, but I just wonder if the people in Maine cherish you for the regional treasure that you are. Because uh, of those of us outside the outside of Maine, looking looking from afar, we're like, oh my goodness, how amazing! Uh, when I got this trip booked and I started looking on your website, it's like I get to actually do a podcast with Diana, the Maine Lobster Lady. I I was so stinking excited. Well, I'm so glad that you decided to come here and have lobster rolls from the Maine Lobster Lady. <laughs> Now we gotta have people come in and taking your photos, and we gotta make you even more famous than you already are. We gotta have people, you know, just hashtagging you, hashtag Maine Lobster Lady, hashtag Sedgwick. Uh, I would like a fun one. Hashtag No Celery. Yeah. <laughs> we'll eat, hashtag Eat a Salad. <laughs> <laughs> Don't sully the lobster roll. <laughs> so, what does it feel like? Um, You've, we, you know, both of us, you know, we talked before recorded, we've had a lot of heartache, a lot of ups and downs. You had an in, uh, I have a dear friend, um, on the Oregon coast that her journey running a bed and breakfast just came to an end. Uh, and, and the joy and the heartache that was for her, you know, she no longer has to clean rooms every morning, mm -hmm. but also, you know, it's, it's a, it's a passing. So you've seen an M come and go. Um, now you've, you had lobsters, uh, on Isla Ho, you had a couple trucks and you were around the country and now you've transitioned, transitioned to both having local and shipping all over. How fulfilling is it that you've made it, you've succeeded, your business is viable and people, you have lots of fans. Yeah. It just feels like I've come full circle. Um, you know, back to my roots and it just feels so great to be home near family doing what I love. And, and you're aware you have fans, right? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> now I heard that Mainers are humble. Um, uh, you, you do. I've, I've seen your social media. Um, you have fans all, so I want to speak for them because a lot of them, uh, I never get this chance. So I want you to know that you have fans, particularly in the Southwest, mm -hmm. but you have fans all over the United States that you have been a blessing to them and a big part of their journey. So speaking from them, uh, thank you so much for bringing that lobster love to us. Uh, I know particularly, um, you know, if you live, if you're a U.S. citizen and you live outside the United States, they call you an expatriate. Mm -hmm. And, uh, for example, when I was in Bulgaria, Bulgaria, there was an expatriates restaurant where all the Americans went to get together, you know, and hang out in Sofia, Bulgaria. And there's all expatriates bars and places all over the world for Americans. Mm -hmm. But for, I guarantee you, there's people that used to live in Maine that mm -hmm. miss lobster rolls, mm -hmm. and they can have now they can have your lobster rolls shipped right to their door. And I'm sure those meals, you're just warm. I'm sorry, I'm about in tears thinking about it, just warming their heart and bringing a taste of home and love right to yes, them. That's the goal. That is the goal for sure. <laughs> 
What what just do people think? You know, because it's not just um, it's not just a lobster roll. That's right. It's love in the form of lobster. <laughs> it's phenomenal. Well, Diana, I, I you know I I'm, I'm blessed. I get to go to Bozeman about once a year, and I've gotten to know the same people. Um, there's certain people that I, I do recurring. You know, the next update in the story for podcast. I want to come back uh, next year, and I want to see the things that have transpired and hear about your journeys. Um, you know, from the moment I first heard about you, I really did. I kind of just fall in love with certain stories. I fell in love with your story and your food is absolutely incredible. I can't wait till Christmas for me when I have that shipment arrive at my door. I'll film the whole thing and tag the, tag the heck out of you. But awesome. uh, thank you so much for all the culinary thank magic you. you make happen. Thank you so very much. All right. Cheers, everybody. Mm-hmm.